Hey everyone, uh, this is going to be my video on how to make your Shang Shao clock good. Uh, it's going to be one take style, so uh, I'll be pausing and playing the recording, but uh, it's just going to be kind of a stream of consciousness here for the most part. <laughs> uh, but anyways, let's get into it. So just to show kind of the end result here, this is the clock that I've already modded. Um, so turns mostly good. Um, pins uh, have some issues with them in terms of like a lining up correctly and sometimes like if you don't turn the gears perfectly you will like run into an issue where like you can't get a pin to go up like right here and then eventually it does but i haven't had too much issue with that personally um so what you're gonna need you're gonna need one clock paper towel this is some traxxas 50k um and a screwdriver of course so Let's go ahead and open up the clock first. So I'm going to take my bad clock. And just for reference, this is me putting the same force on the clock, trying to turn it. It's just not going. Like, significant force has to be placed on this thing to make it work. So we're going to start by taking these four screws here. One, two, three, four, and unscrewing those. And voila, by the magic power of live editing, we have opened the clock. So on one side, uh, mine happened to be the dark insert side, but it probably doesn't, probably varies depending on which one. Uh, one side will have two holes here where there are more screws to get inside the case here. If you don't have Traxxas or some sort of silicone based lube, um, feel free to still just do this. Take these screws and just loosen them a little bit. Like I'm doing about two turns here. And just to kind of demonstrate here, if I put this case back on after just doing that alone, it's already, it goes from unusable to usable. Um, like before, I didn't show this, but before um, it was so tight that the um, pin gears were getting pushed into the point where they were hitting all, somehow both of these. And if I tried to make like turns on the up and down pins, they would clash into each other and make crazy things happen. Um, and that's just not happening anymore. So that's really good. Uh, we're of course gonna do more than that though. So if you have the lube um, to put in here, some sort of silicone based lube like Traxxas 50K is what I use. We're gonna go ahead and unscrew, oops, unscrew this case uh, completely. Once you've unscrewed it, you might have to use a little force to get this open. Yeah, there we go. And it's open. Um, be careful, those tiny screws that were holding the case together will likely pop out. So I'm gonna go ahead and put that in my screw pile over here. And I'll take everything out here. So now we're gonna do the lubing. And the lubing uh, is quite simple. Um, I grabbed a paper towel for this because you want to put an incredibly light coating of it. You can see here right now that the plastic is basically clean, bone dry. Um, what you're going to do is just, uh, however your Traxxas is held, just put it on the paper towel directly. Oh, sorry, that's being blocked. So put it right on the paper towel directly like this. Um, and then just basically use the paper towel to rub it around everywhere. And you want to get this as thin as possible. So like you probably are going to keep wiping up the same spot where you initially dabbed it on many times. And basically what you want to do is you want to, I'll show kind of for reference here, you can sort of see where there is lube and it's probably still a little bit heavy, but you can see that there's still lube in this upper left part, but not bottom right. You basically just want to make it shiny is all you want to do. Uh, you can see that like there is a difference between the lubed and unlubed parts in terms of like the sort of darkness of the black there. So I'm going to keep rubbing uh, this on until basically every part that a clock face touches has this sheen to it from the lube. And you may need to use a few extra applications um, because of course the point of the paper towel is to make sure you don't put too much lube on it, but of course <laughs> you're likely to dab up that lube again as well um, but this actually looks pretty good um, you can see that pretty much on all parts here that it is at least shiny with the exception of maybe some places that clock faces don't quite touch so 
Uh, that's it for this side. We're going to want to do the same to the next side. And you could go ahead and just take out all of these pieces here. Um, yeah, and I think that's what I'll do. So we're just going to go ahead and take out all of the pieces. And apply lube to the black shell, just as we did before. All right, now we have both of these lubed up here. Just a very thin coating of lube. Uh, now that we have completely taken apart the puzzle, we're gonna put it all back together. So take on one of the shells, just place all of the pieces with the big corner clocks here in the corner. Uh, and then place the uh, center and edge clocks in face down, um, matching the color of the side you placed face down before. Doesn't really matter if they're solved, clock can be there's no way to assemble a clock wrong, um, so you'll always be able to solve whatever position, although I seem to be trying to place them so 12 is pointing up. Uh, then go ahead and put the springs in. This is highly infuriating sometimes, um, especially once we get the other stuff on. And because there are magnets involved, and uh, magnets like to play with springs, yep, just like that. So this can be somewhat irritating. So I have all the screws in now, but of course some are sticking out more than others, especially this one. So as you screw them in, you kind of want to just basically keep screwing them in until it's just you um, are first not able to notice the screw much when you rub your finger over. So that one seems good. This one could go in a little bit more. It's pretty good. This can go in a little bit more. And that one's actually pretty good. I might be able to loosen this one a bit. Uh, just be careful as you lo loosen screws. You might want to check the other ones because as you loosen others, um, it might make others more noticeable. Um, but that's basically the clock setup that I've done. And uh, this one now feels a little noticeable. So you'll want to play around with it. Sometimes you kind of have to have the screws poke out a little bit to make sure that it isn't you know, constricting the case too much. Um, but now you can see that the turns are basically effortless now compared to before where it took significant amounts of effort. Even with all pins up, turns are effectively effortless on this puzzle. Um, and no seeming issues with, or at least less issues with pins kind of uh, going through. Well, uh, that one I made some inaccurate turns. Um, But yeah, the puzzle seems much use, more usable than it was out of the box now. And it's a very tactile, I uh, can't solve. Uh, it's a very tactile clock, um, and I do enjoy it. Uh, the one that I've set up already is my main. I probably need to play around with the screw levels of this one, I think on the inside case. Might have been a little too loose, but play around with them. You want to make sure that you do have um, them loose to make room for, you know, the pieces to move around a bit um, and yeah it should make your clock definitely worth uh, using if you don't have a clock yet and you're interested as a $10 puzzle on the cubicle at least that I know of 
Um, this is definitely the puzzle I think you should get for starting off, and I think it is highly competitive as well. Um, so hopefully this is helpful to you in getting it set up. Thanks for watching.